Clean your hands, five with no radio. Five, five, five with no radio dot com. Kings jerseys, baseball jerseys just came in, you know, rocking it with that, uh, you know what I'm saying, the lion head medallion, you know what I'm saying, just uh, trying to stay fresh, you know, fresh out the gym, and, you know what I mean, trying to switch it up this week, but uh, yeah, we back, uh, had a break, Thanksgiving, holiday, birthday, you know, been out shopping, been out, uh, you know, Christmas shopping, getting, getting things done, uh, I ain't even going to no news, just want to get into to a topic. Uh, emotional decisions. You know, a lot of people make emotional decisions in their teens and twenties. Just make sure, you know, you you, you know, it's, it's the right move. You know, because that move could have long-term ramifications that could affect the rest of your life. Uh, I remember in my twenties, I dropped out of college. Um, you know, I wanted to pursue music, and I wasn't really happy with um, the school I was going to. And, uh, you know, there, there's, if I would have thought that through, you possibly, you know, if I had a mentor or an advisor that would have, you know, helped me out through the process, you know, um, things could have been different. Uh, you know, also a few years later on the football team I was on, I quit on the arena football team that I was playing on because it wasn't the right situation. I didn't like the offense. I didn't like the playing time scenario uh, seemed like it was favoritism uh, you know so I kind of just left and just didn't really say nothing and it's like burning bridges you know what I mean like you know later yeah many there's many years later of course you want to you want to you still love the game I still love the game I have a passion had a passion for the game and, and uh, when you do things like that you can't go back there uh, word spreads too when you make decisions and you show irrational behavior where it gets out and you're going to ruin your own reputation. So you got to think about uh, before you make emotional decisions, and, you know, whatever it is, whether it's, you know, you're quitting a job, you're getting ready to rob a bank, uh, you're going to pull out a gun, you're going to cheat on your spouse. Just think. Think about who that's going to affect long term. Think about your family, your loved ones, that, that that decision is going to affect, you know, before you make that decision, maybe why don't you communicate? Go to the source of the problem or the issue. Communication is key. Talk it through, you know, nine times out of 10, you know, people are reasonable. You can work things out, you know what I mean? If something's going wrong at, the, at your job, at the ball, with the boss, try to figure a way to compromise so both sides will be happy. Uh, same thing in relationships you know a lot of times people uh, have separate lives you know and then they come home and there's a lot of stress and tension built up but uh, you know what you got to do is just each other got to tell each other what's bothering you just come to the table and figure a way to compromise I've been being in relationships for many years and uh, you know early on in relationships came to an emotional bad ending and uh not cool with them people anymore burning bridges like many years spent with somebody and then just over one fight or one incident bam up and leave not cool again delete people on social media all that you ain't gotta be like that you can end amicably amicably <laughs> amicably am i saying it right no whatever i'm i'm a Sometimes I ramble on and say words I shouldn't say, but things can end on a positive note. Uh, 
but y'all can still be cool, especially if you got kids, you can co-parent, and uh, keep things cool, man. Keep it smooth, keep it pimping, keep it moving. So that's what I want to talk to you about. That's it. Now we finna jump right in to the to the to the uh yeah we gonna jump right into the 49ers. 49ers back at it again with another L. Now they six and six. A few weeks ago, I mean it was looking good. You know Samuel was, was doing his thing. Uh, now he's injured. Uh, you know they started using the formula that I had been calling for earlier in the year. Uh, you know, sticking to running the ball, uh, Elijah Mitchell, uh, you know what I'm saying, ground game, uh, you know, run sets up the pass. And uh, this week, you know, a lot of people were saying how, you know, Seattle sucks and the Seahawks don't have a chance. We should have blew them out. They were three and eight. And I was thinking the whole time, man, they got Russell Wilson. You know, they play us different. And, uh, you know, it's always a battle up there. And, and, Lo and behold, we took another L. I don't know what it is about going up there. It's like a haunted house, house of horrors, whatever it is, man. It's, it's something that about that Seattle, that 12th man, that the crowd noise, or they be pumping in fake noise, uh, whatever it is. We just have trouble up there ever since Kaepernick and Harbaugh, uh, even Alex Smith before that. It's just it's somewhere where we can't we can't just function properly for some reason. It's that crowd noise, or it's just they got our number, uh, and we took another L. Garoppolo, uh, 20 and 30 for 299 yards, two touchdowns, and two picks. Once again, I don't know, he's, he's throwing the ball too high. Uh, you know, getting happy feet in the pocket before pressure even uh, shows up. Uh, you know, I don't know what it is, man, but like I said earlier, he's good enough. He's just good enough to be not good enough. You know, to be where we are right now, mediocre. In that six and six, uh, only thing I see with if it keeps going like this, I mean, I want to stay positive. Of course, we be trying to get the chip, but I just don't think, you know, with him at with him at the helm at quarterback, it's gonna happen. It's just gonna be a one and done in the playoffs. Uh, you might as well see what Lance can do. Trey Lance, first round pick. I mean, let him start developing now so he can, you know start the process and, and possibly even go on a run. Like, remember when we put Kaepernick in in 2012 and he ripped off like seven or eight straight wins into the playoffs and, and uh, you know, he made a run. And, and uh, that's what we got to look at. You know, he, he ended up taking us to the Super Bowl. We don't know what this kid could do. Uh, we know what uh, we know what Garoppolo can do. We've seen it. It's mediocre. He's just good enough to get you beat. And he's just not good enough. So that's what it is. Uh, about time to start relying on George Kittle. I mean, just, be, you know, when we had Samuel, he was the go-to. But you got to have more than one threat, you know. Uh, and he had a big game, nine catches for 181 yards, two touchdowns. When Samuel gets back, hopefully this week against Cincinnati, uh, you know, we'll be able to see the offense open up. Um, we still got to start with the run. And I think Elijah Mitchell was hurt. Um, you know, so that's not a good look, but uh, we got uh, Wilson Jr., the running back that should be getting a lot of the carries this week. Uh, he's been solid, uh, he's been solid every time I see him, see him up in there. Uh, so yeah, Shan Shanahan needs to rely on the run and uh, you know, go ahead and get it downfield to George Kittle uh, and open it up for uh, you know, Debo Samuel and Brandon IU have a balanced attack. We'll start with the run, ball control, you know, have have ball control uh, be a priority and uh, maintain dominance of the time of possession. And uh, I think we should have a good shot. I mean, Joe Burrow and the Cincinnati Bengals, I mean, they, they, they uh, you can't take them lightly. I mean, they, they're pretty solid. Joe Burrow, from what I understand, is a very good, very solid young quarterback in Cincinnati. Um, they got Jamar Chase, who might be, I think he might be the rookie of the year, from what I understand. So, um, our secondary is going to have our hands full. I think that's our biggest weakness right now. Uh, so, you know what? It's, we got to rely on the D-line. What we have is, a, is one of the best D-lines in the NFL. Uh, Nick Bosa, 
consistently uh, putting pressure on the quarterback. This is a big time game. We got to get back over 500. Uh, go to seven and six. You know, continue to to march along to get to that wild card spot. Right, let's talk about them dubs. Go State Warriors, 21 and four. Uh, you know, we had a little trouble uh, with Phoenix, but I ain't worried about no Phoenix, man. That's the only team in the league that I think we may have problems with. But once Clay get back, and what I'm hearing is he's coming back uh, sometime around Christmas. You know, it's going to be a wrap. It's going to be too many threats. We're going to be able to spread the floor. And uh, you can't guard everybody. There's going to be shooters up. Um, you know, all spots of the floor, they're going to be shooters. You know, baseline, wing, uh, and then it's going to be people cutting. I mean, there's, there's no way uh, you're going to be able to stop that type of firepower. But, but I will say this. Steve Kerr, uh, you know, I know it's a pride thing. With Clay, you know, he was a starter. You know, he's a part of the three championships. Uh, but, I mean, the man just came off with two injuries. So, what I would say, let him come off the bench. Let him come off the bench in the beginning. I don't know how long. Maybe the first three to five games. Maybe the first month. But let him, you know, slowly ease his way back into it. You know, because the worst thing that could happen, you know what I'm saying, he get out there and then click. He tears something, you know, he messes something up again, or it just, you know, the progress for the last two years is, is gone, and then he start from scratch. And uh, I got experience with that because I've torn an ACL and an MCL and uh, try to come back too early and end up missing the whole season, you know what I'm saying? Because also because, uh, you know, faulty advice from doctors too, which that's a whole nother issue, but. Uh, I would just say let let him ease his way back into it. The speed of the game, you know, is much different than practice. You know, it's going to be intensity, especially if he comes out with the ones. Let him get out there with the twos and, uh, you know, get his confidence up. And then eventually, you know, once playoff time come back around, he'll be in full motion. He'll be ready to go. And, uh, yeah, we'll be all good. So, yeah, the Dubs. Uh, Shoot, they got a game tomorrow night. Today's Friday. They got a game tomorrow night with the 76 ers right, we ain't worried about them, man. So we finna be at least, yeah, we're gonna be 22 and 4. And going into the road trip, and Steph is going for that uh three-point uh all-time greatest three-point shooter title. You know, the most three-pointers ever for anybody in the NBA. That's crazy. Um, and you know, from what he's come from with his first few years, you know, he was battling ankle injuries I believe he was only averaging like 13 14 points or something like that now look at him. comparing him to Michael Jordan and, uh, you know some of the greatest players of all time so shout out to Steph and uh, hope he gets that record soon let's talk about them East Bay Kings ABA basketball team that's my squad uh, yeah it's a work in progress we building um, you know, right now we still have an open tryouts. Uh, I'm going to let y'all know. Uh, go ahead and register on the website. Anybody with college or pro experience is preferred. Uh, we 0 and 3 in the Pacific North Division of the ABA. We got some good standout performances. Uh, some guys getting 28, 29 points. Guys like Deshaun McNeil, uh, Ant Navarrete, uh, my boy Mike Ladd. You know, doing this thing, uh, but we just took an L to the SF City Cats. It was ugly. We was with them. We hung with them uh, through three quarters, and then at the end, it wasn't wasn't nothing nice, man. You know, I don't know how they got up by 20, but you know, it's all good. We got the talent. Our squad got the talent to hang with any of these teams. We just got to come together, uh, build chemistry. You know, have a system. Everybody knows what to do. And uh, just have a structure and be more consistent, man. You know, anytime uh, you're building something new, it takes time. Rome wasn't built in a day. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so we grinding it out. And uh, we got open doors. You know, we we, uh, we scouting. We out here recruiting. And, uh, yeah, you know, it's a new franchise. It's not going to be here today. Gone tomorrow. We building it. The clothing line is on deck for show. It's always going to be here. EastBayKings.com. Uh, and yeah, in January, 
We finna have we gonna announce we have a big announcement soon about a upcoming uh training day and also a uh ABA kids camp that we're gonna put together. Anybody that comes to the next game, uh yeah, anybody that comes to the next game is gonna get a free invite uh you know to those events. Next game is 12 18, December 18th, Silicon Valley Panthers coming through to Las Positas College in Livermore, California. Uh, we're going to host them at 1 p.m. Saturday, December 18th. Uh, go ahead on the website, go to Eventbrite, uh, search East Bay Kings, and uh, tickets on sale right now. Uh, so, yeah, that's what it is, man. I appreciate y'all's support. Bay Area, continue to show y'all support. Um, you know, I know so many sports teams and things to do out here. Uh, but, you know, we, we homegrown, you know, built from scratch. Started up in 2020, and we're here now. It's almost 2022. Uh, so, yeah, go to the we website, spaykings.com, no support the, the merchandise and stuff. Uh, 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 get a ticket, come out to the game. So that's what it is. Uh, we'll catch y'all next time on the East Bay Kings podcast. 510radio.com. Keep tuning in for 24-7 West Coast Slap. It's your boy Renz Jr. Signing up.